All right, so uh, today we're going to start with our inventory system. So for those of you who are new, this is going to be covered from the you know the very bare minimum up. So this is going to be very, very friendly to new people. You don't have to have had watched the other 60 whatever videos. If you've been following the series, I'm going to be taking some stuff that we did before, but I'm going to restructure it just slightly. So this is still good even if you've seen the 60 odd videos before this. So essentially what we're doing is we're creating an inventory panel that we haven't done anything with yet, but eventually we're going to make inventory. We're going to make a little scrollable window here. We're going to have uh, items, and when you click on an item, it'll tell you its name, its description, and if it's a usable item, you can use it. So yeah, that's what we're doing today. Let's dive right in. Okay, welcome back. So today we're going to be talking or taking a look at our inventory system. By far, the inventory system is the number one most requested thing for me to work on for a game like this. Um, there are some inventory tutorials on YouTube, but the problem is that they all follow a specific um, mindset, and that mindset is something that those people would use in their own projects. And there's nothing wrong with that. I'm not putting anybody on blast for doing it that way. And I'm actually going to do the same thing. My game from the or this game that we've all been working on from the ground up has an architecture that relies heavily on scriptable objects. So we're going to be taking those scriptable objects and we're going to be using them as inventory items. And then the inventory itself is a scriptable object. And then we're going to create some UI that refers to those. And then we're going to be able to, to save them so that we have the same inventory as we leave. We're going to make an inventory that is stackable so that if you have like say one health potion and you pick up another health potion, it won't add another slot. It'll instead add an extra one to the one that you have. We're going to add an inventory that is usable, meaning that you can go to your pause menu, go to your inventory, and then from there you can use a magic potion or a health potion or something like that. Or, a, I don't know, a power-up potion that works over time or whatever you want to do. Um, so, yeah. If you've already been following the tutorial, this first video is going to be just a little bit of overlap from what we've covered before when we started talking about um, keys. However, I'm going to be changing some things. If you're completely new to this tutorial, no problem. Take a look at the uh, GitHub link so that you can grab the kind of fresh version of this and then you can just follow along. Or what I'm covering is easy enough that you should be able to implement it in any other top-down 2D style game or really even 3D game that you'd want to. Um, so yeah, let's talk about the main idea behind all of this. So right now we have our canvas that we use to keep our player HUD on. We have a pause canvas that we use to keep our pause screen on. I'm going to make a new canvas specific, well, no, we'll make this part of the pause canvas because we want it to be part of the pause system. So inside of my pause canvas here, Right now the pause canvas is empty. If I go to my pause panel, turn it on, you can see what that looks like. I'm going to create another panel similar to that, which is going to be for my inventory. And I'm just going to create it right now. So I'm going to create a UI. Uh, this is going to be a panel. And I'm going to change the image here and the color. I'm going to make it um, fully opaque because this is going to be an image. The source image is going to be, what are those? Oh, that's what those are from. Um, the source image is from objects, so it's objects 128. And we want this to be, let's, okay. So what I'm going to do first, uh, this is the objects 128. This comes from my art file that comes with the project. So if you go to GFX in the build files, or if you go to the link that I have in my description for where to find this, it's in objects. And then you need to slice it so that we can slice out the this one nice little one here, which is what I'm using as a panel. In addition to slicing it, I also nine sliced it so that it's going to um, stretch nicely so long as we have the sliced option turned on. So there we go. All right, now. I'm going to change the way this is anchored to the screen, which changes the way that Unity treats it. Currently, I have it anchored to all four corners. I'm going to click in this little rect transform here, and I want it anchored to the center of the screen, top to bottom. So I'm going to resize this now. 
And you'll notice that this has the width of the panel. I want the width to be 500. And I want the height to be 300. And then I'm going to put its position Y, which I think is top here. I'm just going to move it down manually until I find where it goes. So 150. All right, cool. What did I have the other panel set up to be? So pause panel, image. Oh, I have 500 by 400. So let's go. Oh, ha, huh, because it's the bottom. All right, cool. Let's put you back up to the top so that I know how big you're going to be. Uh, bottom, 400. Is that? That's nah, not right. Come here. Um, okay, so the whole thing is 600, so this should be 100 and 100. I'm dumb sometimes. I know, I know you guys hate it when I say that. I, I just, I say it all the time. I don't actually mean I'm dumb. Um, I just get frustrated with myself sometimes. So, okay, there's my panel. I'm going to rename this inventory panel, and I'm going to leave it for now. Inventory panel. I'm going to be coming back to this, but for now, I'm going to leave it. So I'm just going to check it off and then uh, close this pause canvas. Now, the next thing I'm going to do, actually, let's keep it open for a second. My plan for this is I want to have, let's actually take our pause canvas and let's move it up in the sort order. There we go. So if you'll notice the pause canvas there was showing behind my UI canvas, I want it above. So I just highlighted the main canvas and changed the sort order to be one. If I made the sort order something negative, the other one registers above it. And that's because my canvas is set to zero. So inside of a canvas, if you have something like things are drawn from top to bottom, so something that's on top is going to register below something on bottom. But if you're dealing with separate canvases, then you're going to need to talk about the sort order. So anyway, looking at my inventory panel. So here's my idea. I want to have a button on the pause panel that brings up your inventory. Your inventory is going to say inventory here. I want to have a scrollable box that is laid out like a grid so that you can scroll through in case you have a whole bunch of items. And I want each of those items to act like a button. So when you click on the item, you'll get a description of it down here. And then if it's an item that you can use, you'll get an item that says use or a button that says use. If it's an item that's unique or something that you cannot use from the pause menu, you will not get that button. The button will be gone. And then there'll be some way for you to return back to inventory or press escape. So. That's my main idea, and this is the beginnings of that panel. So I'm um, going to take my pause canvas, turn that panel off. All right, cool. Now, as far as each of those items go, we need to know what we need from each item. So since I'm going to have some text displaying for it, I'm going to need to have an item name. Since I am going to have to have, I want a description of the item, because I think that's really cool in games like Dark Souls, I'm going to have to have a Description. Both of those are going to need to be springs or strings. <laughs> strings. Uh, I'm going to have to have some sort of graphic to display what the item should look like. So I'm going to need a sprite. I'm going to need an integer value to tell me how many of them I'm currently holding so that I'm not just adding a new one every time. Instead, I can have them stack one on top of each other. Um, I need to have a couple of Boolean values to tell me if the item is usable or if the item is unique so that I know if you can have that button turned on. So what I'm going to do here is I've already created inside of my uh, scripts folder. Uh, I've already created a scriptable objects. I'm going to create a new folder that I'm going to call inventory. And I'm doing this so that I can um, remake a few things. So this gets called inventory. And then inside the inventory script, I'm going to create a new C Sharp script. And this is going to be called inventory item. Helps if I spell it correctly. So I'm going to open this up in Visual Studio. All right, cool. Now, this is essentially just a container of information about the inventory item itself. So I don't really need to have this come from mono behavior. It doesn't need to have a start or an update tick. I'm just going to get rid of these, and I'm not going to inherit from mono behavior. Instead, I want it to be something that I can create in my uh, editor, just like creating anything else, like a material or a sprite. 
So I'm going to make this a scriptable object. If you've been watching the tutorial, you should be pretty familiar with these by now. If you're brand new, scriptable objects are by far my favorite thing about Unity. So in order to have this be something that we can create in our game, I'm going to add a tag here. And that tag is going to be create asset menu. And create asset menu actually has a couple other things that I haven't explored so far on this series that you can do to make your life easier. So I'm going to explore them now. So I can create a file name, which is the file name that it will default to being created. And I'm going to create a menu name. So file name. And then this needs to be a string. So I'm going to call it new item. And then I'm going to give it a menu name. So menu name. And this is going to be inventory slash items. And I think that's all I need to have because I don't need to tell it the order. Okay, so let's create our variables here. Let's make a public string for item name, public string for item description. Let's make a public sprite for item image, a public int for number held. And these do need to be public because we're going to need to access them from other scripts. Uh, let's make a public bool usable. We could use a getter and a setter to make it so that they're only public to get but not set. But for now, I'm fine doing it this way. And a public bool for unique. All right, cool. So there's all my information. Now I'm going to go back into Unity here and make sure I save my script. And it's going to compile for a second. All right, cool. Now, I, in my project, I have a folder for my scripts, but I have a second folder for my scriptable objects. So I already have an items folder, and this is from earlier in the game. But I'm going to choose to create a new folder. And I'm going to call this folder inventory stuff. I have a tendency to use stuff a lot. Apparently, I don't like proper nouns. I'm going to open that folder. And now here's the cool thing about scriptable objects. I'm going to right click. I'm going to go to create. And that create asset menu allows you to add it to here. And previously, I always just did create asset menu, which means that you're creating it as whatever it is. But since I made it an inventory item, I can now choose items. And then it creates itself as a new item. I'm going to call this um, item, I'll call this soldier sword. And Soldier Sword is going to get a name. Soldier Sword. Its description is Sword your father left you. Blade is quite dull, but it gets the job done. Um, for the item image, I don't think I have it. I don't think I made any art for this yet. I have the arrow, the bow. I'm going to give it the arrow. No, that's not right. Number held is one. This is not usable, so it's not like a health potion. It is unique. There's only ever going to be one of them. So there we go. Now, next time we're going to extend this, and we're going to create an actual inventory system that's going to read these items so that it knows what's in the inventory. Then we're going to start taking that information and adding it onto our UI so that it can dynamically display itself to the player. So if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments down below. You can follow me on Twitter to find out when I post new videos. My Discord is a really awesome place to go to hang out, to see what people are up to, what people have tried out. Lots of really patient, really awesome people there for you to, to hang out with. Uh, shout out to Faker and Sir Psycho. Yeah, they've been awesome. Um, shout out to Jacqueline and Magic Panda and Raphael and Faker and Sir Psycho, yeah. Everybody else who's been who's been helping people while I'm gone. So thank you very much. Um, you can give this video a like if you want. You can give it a dislike if you want, but you can still just give it a like even if you hated what I said. Um, you can subscribe, hit the bell icon, share. Just go crazy on those buttons down there. Just, just click them all. Why not? Who cares? <laughs> uh, I hope everybody out there has themselves a wonderful day.